Hi, this is Yohsop Nbharthiya and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us once again, Abby Cruz, Chief Technology Officer at Puppet. Abby, it's great to have you on the show. And this is our first interaction of 2021. Yes. And aren't we off to a fantastic start to a new year? If I'm not wrong, you uh, recently joined the board at Lightband. So first of all, I want to hear from you is, what do they do? Why did you join their board? I was so excited when I got a chance to talk to the Lightband team, you know, who have been for years, you know, the powerhouse house behind languages that I think we all know and rely on, like Scala and Akka. And to hear about the work that they were doing around cloud native application architectures, you know, they launched um, earlier in 2020, the Reactive Foundation, and just, you know, how they were really investing and building on both an open source foundation, which obviously I care deeply about, but really how they were trying to tackle one of the more complicated aspects of cloud native application architectures at scale. And really in having conversations with Mark and Jonas and you know the rest of the executive team, I got really excited about the work they were doing and the opportunity. And when they offered me the opportunity to take an independent board seat, I said, well, this sounds great. And it sounds like a match made in heaven because you know where they're trying to go, I am super passionate about having spent a lot of time over the last seven years thinking about cloud native architectures and you know, as workloads are moving to the cloud, what does that look like? And really being able to partner closely with a company that is really trying to shape the future of it uh, sounded like an opportunity. So what role will you be playing there? Mark, Jonas, and the entire exec team, you know, are obviously in charge in the day-to-day and are running the company and the teams. And, and they're all doing a fantastic job. And, you know, at this point, it's just... You know, my perspective is I'm just here to give them advice and help them navigate, you know, a very complicated landscape. As you and I both know, navigating open source and commercial capabilities and really factoring in how fast the cloud native ecosystem is evolving. You know, I just I just want to help them be part, um, really take advantage of that. Now, if you look at your own career graph, you know, uh, you have been part of so many new foundations, companies, organizations. Now you're at Puppet. If you look at your career graph and if you look at evolution of these cloud native technologies, uh, we are in a phase where a lot of technologies are now being used in production, which also mean that that you know the honeymoon period is over. You are actually, you know, it's no more just, hey, Kubernetes is shiny thing or Cloud Foundry is shiny thing or XYZ is shiny thing. You are actually dealing with the day two issues, challenges. Plus, if you look at the big giant cloud native landscape, there is a lot of complexity, you know. So the whole idea of a whole idea of cloud and cloud, you know, open source was to democratize things, make it easier for people to use. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So can you please talk about uh, just uh, the, the how you have seen the evolution of open source technologies? And while we do have access to these technologies, it also creates a lot of complexity. So that's where we'll also talk about Puppet, you know, because Puppet is still is evolving. You, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It is such a vastly complex landscape that you know, if I think back to where we were six years ago, you know, we often think, wow, those were simpler times, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago when you had one or two options. And now you have a plethora of options at each layer. And there's so much evolution and innovation happening at, at every layer of the infrastructure. We're in the process of rewriting what it means to do enterprise infrastructure. We're rewriting that foundation. And it's all happening in the open source which is great because to your point, it democratizes that access and really brings and surfaces the best ideas in this space. But, you know, it's a point you were also making with that innovation really brings a ton of complexity because now if you're an enterprise, if you're running, you're an architect or a platform operator or, or anyone at an enterprise company, you're like, okay, well, what do I choose? Do I choose all, some, a subset? How do I know? How do I put the pieces together? And so where I feel like we are is we've got a lot of great technologies out there, but there are a lot of puzzle pieces. And so now we have to start putting that puzzle together so that it can really become the foundation of what we're building everything else on top of. And I, that's the process that I think you're starting to see that consolidation and that settling of, okay, 
we've all agreed this is where we are. Now let's continue to move up the stack and continue to drive that innovation and that proliferation. But there's also that contraction as we start to really stabilize. And that's where I think one, the power of really solidifying what that, that story and that narrative is. And I, the one thing I think we haven't done well as an industry is be opinionated and prescriptive. We've kind of said, I don't know, choose your own adventure. And that's a really, really hard thing to rationalize when all of the pieces in that adventure are changing the whole way too. <laughs> you know, there's new releases, new evolution, new capabilities, new, new expansions. You know, if I look at the number of startups just in each of these narrow slices, there's, I don't know, there's a hundred in each of them. Which do you choose? <laughs> Which one's the right one? Which one, you know, and I think that's really complicated things, but it's also part of the evolution. When you're early in any technology, you have that broad proliferation, that broad expansion, and that contraction as we start to really solidify and really choose the best solution and the best opportunities. And when we do think about you know, those things, when they get opinionated, of course, you look at a platform-like approach, which also runs risk of kind of vendor lock in number one number thing is too is you know lack of flexibility but at the same time the the whole idea is that users should be able to leverage these technologies because all a, a company wants is to deliver their apps to their users you know all this complexity that comes with it that is one piece second piece is that when we do talk about cloud native technologies uh, we also tend to forget that the Linux of the cloud is still Linux. So there is a lot of underneath technology that also, you know, whether you talk about security, whether, so we should have that holistic approach as well. And that's where it becomes even more complicated. Uh, so, so my point is that as, I mean, yes, consolidation in terms of industry may be a good thing, but if you look at CNCF landscape, there are so many projects, you know, so, and these are all open source projects. So that is another big challenge there. So, so when I look at Puppet, I had a discussion with Deepak, you know, a few hours ago, uh, the whole idea is to help users in their own journey you know, without them having to make all those decisions because security is, especially if you look at solar winds, right? Even if it is totally unrelated thing, but you have to take everything into account. So talk about, you know, from, from your own experience, your own journey, as you see people are maturing, um, these complexities are not going away. Yes, opinionated things, are, but how do you see things shaping? I'm not talking about consolidation of industry. I'm talking talking about all these integration between all these projects? I mean, that's a great question because I do, um, I'm gonna separate the threads for a minute. Yes, there's gonna be consolidation in the projects. That's for sure. Like winners will arise. They always do. There will be consolidation, there'll be contraction. And, and you, you know, you and I have been in open source a long time, so I've known, I think you longer than me actually. Um, and, you know, Open, every open source project, pure open source project has its lifespan. It goes up, it increases, then it goes down and it reaches a glide path. And hopefully the best of projects, it has a long glide path and a long story. Like you pointed out, Linux it has been around, what, 25, 26 years now. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, every open source project goes through that evolution. And I think when you have a lot of different opportunities, you'll see that contraction, that consolidation, you know, to kind of bring it back to that opinion and that prescriptive nature, we're gonna have to pick a solution. You're, we're gonna have to pick a path and that's really what's gonna become the standard. And, you know, for example, Kubernetes has arisen as the standard for container orchestration, right? That's it. Um, and it, it won out through majority of usage and contribution and investment. But at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's the choice that was made. And we're going to start to see that rise. You know, we're starting to see that debate play out with things like service mesh. And, and we'll continue to see that play out with every, every project and every aspect. But at the end of the day, this is all evolving as a collective in real time, which is exciting. And for all of us that are technologists, it's amazing. It's exciting. It's thrilling. But when we start to put our customers hats on, particularly for those in the enterprise, okay, well, how do we help them navigate that? And as I look at our opportunities here at Puppet, it's been to really build on the success we've had with a platform and to have that opportunity. And I think 
yes, customers want flexibility, but they want flexibility within bounds. And they want flexibility that allows them to take advantage but still achieve their business outcomes because what enterprise companies mostly don't want to be is they don't want to be uh, platform companies. They don't want to have to go out and build their own platform. They don't want to have to build their own open source distribution of something. Now, this is not true for all. There are some that do. But at the end of the day, that's not what they're trying to become. They're trying to be use technology and software to redefine and accelerate their business. And that technology should be a lever for them. It shouldn't be their all their end game. And I think that's really where we as technologists have to understand that there is that intersection between the value technology brings to the table and what it can do and how customers are going to use that and integrate it into their existing capabilities. Yeah, I mean, I would love to, to talk about the brand of the car I want, but I really don't care about the, the brand of airbag or the, <laughs> the, the the brake drum, right? Yeah, so there are a lot of decisions that I will trust them. Now, when we do talk about this complexity, uh, there's another thing that with all these new latest you know, technologies and they're coming up at such a faster pace. Uh, human talent is also becoming a big challenge. Plus from the security perspective, automation, uh, uh, those things are also becoming important. So what role do you, use? Uh, Let's not talk about the world, but what, what are the core challenges that you see? We should be looking at the next wave of cloud native technologies. You know, automation can be one, levering a lot of AI ML is one from security perspective, misconfiguration, configuration can be one. So talk about that where you can also talk about Lightband and Puppet. Yeah, I do think automation is, is here. And I think if you think as an organization, you're going to be running cloud native workloads at scale in hybrid estates without automating that, you're, you know, you're in for heartbreak because as, as you get to bigger and bigger scales, there is you can't throw enough people at that problem. There is just no way to achieve that. And so automation is going, you know, is here to stay as we think about cloud native workloads. But even as you think about on-prem workloads, just think about how much of that really needs to be automated as organizations try to balance both on-prem capabilities as well as those in the cloud. Most enterprises today are managing that hybrid estate. They're managing um, on-prem capabilities, their own data center, and one or more public clouds. And that really requires automation to manage that effectively at scale. Um, and you mentioned solar wind. You know, as we start to think about security, compliance, there's only one way to achieve that, and that's through automation. And so, when I look at it with my puppet hat on, absolutely, automation remains our singular focus. That's our, you know, that's our heritage, and that's where we come from, and we're going to continue to invest in that. But what we're also doing is thinking through, okay, how do enterprises handle automation across hybrid estates? What does that look like? How do enterprises think about both um, monolithic or, or legacy or heritage applications in conjunction with cloud native applications? Because organizations are going to have both forever. And how do we, how do we help organizations deal with that? And then, you know, the follow on to that is security and compliance. Like there is no way someone with a spreadsheet can make sure that your 250,000 nodes across three different clouds are compliant. No, you have to automate that and you have to automate who has access, when do they have access, is this patched, where, you know, it's stuff we don't like to talk about. Nobody really gets excited about day two. <laughs> you know, it's not sexy, it's not. It's not the things that make the news until it does make the news. And then, of course, you know, everyone's sad because there's been a breach or you're out of compliance. But at the end of the day, those remain really critical capabilities that allow these, the businesses to keep running and moving. And that's where I think, to, to my earlier point, technology has to rise to meet the business. And I think automation is really one of those areas that really help a business reach their outcomes. We are, you know, we went through this pandemic, you know, it, it did change a lot of things, you know, uh, a lot of companies, you know, they... they I don't get to see you at conferences anymore. So it changed a lot of things. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, but from tech point of view, uh, while it did not change the trajectory for a lot of companies, it did accelerate their path to digital transformation or cloud native. Uh, and also we learned a lot of things that, even if we are out of this pandemic, uh, those lessons will help us, you know, become more efficient, more effective. How it is? How is it going to change uh, all 
that we talked about, you know, the challenges companies are facing when it comes to uh, leveraging cloud and technology. What are the new patterns that you are saying will become a norm because of this pandemic? Oh, there's so many norms that are just going to be here to stay. Uh, you know, how we work, where we work, hybrid workforces, right? Um, you know, that's that's definitely here to stay. Like, you can't just... That's one of those things, you can't put that genie back in the bottle, right? It's it's. Uh, We've all settled into new ways of working. You know, some of us have remodeled our houses to accommodate <laughs> our new working style. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it's changed the way we work. And and if you look at enterprises, and and particularly, you know, obviously, I care a lot about enterprise infrastructure and technology. It's definitely changed expectations. It's accelerated a lot of organizations move to the cloud in some respects. It's actually. Um, thankfully accelerated the move to the cloud, but more organizations are trying to do so in a thoughtful and intentional way. So it's gone are the days of let's just throw it in the cloud and call it good, but more of what are we going to do? What are we moving to the cloud? And how does that really help us drive our long-term gains and efficiencies? Um, it also is going to change the way we think about how we manage this. And that's really where automation has taken an uptick in terms of use and interest from organizations, because now they're not only having to manage more disparate capabilities, again, across that hybrid estate, they're having to do that with remote workers now. If you're running your own data center, it's not that easy now to go to the data center and, and work on things. And how do you start to manage those things in more of a lights out fashion? And how do you deal with problems where you can't just bring everybody together in a single room to deal with? And so I do think automation and the role it plays in organization is becoming a higher and higher priority. Um, but also, I do think the pandemic has really shown a light on security and compliance, you know, security and, and how do you manage compliance when you have now people working remotely around the world, they have access and need to have access to a lot of systems. So how do you manage that, ensure that it's being done securely and effectively, and how do you ensure that, you know, the compliance, you're, you're still meeting your compliance requirements, and that's across every industry. So I think- right. Things have changed. I don't think, I think a lot of the conversations we've been having for many years have just accelerated and just really, you know, consolidated on either these are problems we actually have to solve versus we may or may not try to solve that problem too. I am very excited about the Reactive Foundation because I think it really brings, and you and I talked about this before, is like, We've been talking about cloud native application architectures. We've been talking about serverless, but at the end of the day, that's work that's really going to naturally move to open source. We're going to really define the frameworks and the details and how those workloads need to work. And it's going to happen in the open source. And I love the fact that Lightbend really, you know, said, okay, we're going to start the reactive foundation. We're going to start this conversation. We're going to start to figure out how do we start to shape this narrative and really start to pull together the threads that are, that are happening everywhere, but they're really not happening as effectively as I think they should be in the open source. Abby, thank you so much for talking to me today about uh, your, your joining the board of Lightband and also about the whole evolution of cloud native technologies, the challenges, you know, the honeymoon period is over, now the actual challenges, that's why all the movies, they end, you know, with they lived happily ever after, we don't see the ever after part. <laughs> Well, so, we'll get there. I think it's. I think we're still a few years out from the happily ever after. You know, I think we're still, we're all still collectively evolving, and it's a growing and evolving organism. As you look, you know, you've been around open source a long time, and open source really kind of takes a life of its own. And the best we can all hope for as a community is to shape it into that right direction. Right. Uh, once again, I'd be thank you.